Dr. John T. Abercrombie is a dynamic apostle and teacher graced by God to deliver life-altering, faith-building, and soul-prospering messages. Since 1990, Apostle Abercrombie has faithfully pastored Zolife Ministries International of Chicago, Illinois. His apostolic call has taken him across the continent, spreading the gospel and training leaders for effective ministry. Apostle Abercrombie embarked on a successful career in retail management and the food industry, eventually becoming an accomplished entrepreneur with Dean Foods and Baskin Robbins franchises, and also operating Long John Silver a w Root Beer Restaurants. And now, Joy Center, please stand and receive Apostle Dr. John T. Abercrombie. Hey, God bless you all. I'm Dr. Mike Brown, and I'm glad you tuned in. And tonight we're going to have a powerful service. We have two incredible guests that are from Chicago, and they are going to bless our hearts. In fact, they're going to bless your socks off. And you don't want to miss tonight at 7 o'clock, but we're just going to talk a little bit about what's going to happen and what you can expect uh, to happen tonight. But these are two powerful people. My, I mean, my wife and I was talking with them about their incredible testimonies. And I mean, they've been married for 42 years and God has blessed them to own, I mean, just a conglomerate of businesses. And, uh, and, and that was the first part of it was out, no faith, just favor. And so you want to hear what God has in, literally planted within these two people and watch what God will do for you tonight. So uh, without further ado, I want to welcome Dr. John T. Apostle, John T. Abercrombie and his beautiful wife, Rose Abercrombie. God bless you all. Bless you, Bishop. Very bless good you, to Bishop. have you. Good, good to be here. Good to be here. You all from Chicago yesterday, you sat in. How do you like the city of El Paso? I love, love, love the city <laughs> of El Paso. You know, you and I were talking, well, all of us were talking on yesterday and I just kind of shared my observation as we were just kind of riding uh, just to get a light bite to eat. And I just was so observant of the calmness and for this to be a city, you know, and where we're from, you're just so used to the hustle and the bustle in the city and everything is fast paced and right now and yesterday right. and this and that and so forth and so on. Transportation, <laughs> you know, you got horns blowing. Up. So it's just a just a limelight of city for real. But get here to this city, it's just so calm and so serene. And immediately I just felt my, my spirit just say, ah, relax. But it's nice. It's nice to be here. Praise God. We yeah. know it's good to have you all. Pastor. Well, I, you know, I certainly I've enjoyed myself this far. And what makes me uh, as it pertains to the city is the weather. Mm. You know, I love, uh, I love areas where the weather is, is conducive. When I mean conducive, that is to say that uh, the weather's above 75. Uh, listen, I come alive at 75. Right. Uh, yeah, you come alive. I love that. <laughs> so, you know, we're just looking forward to having a, a wonderful, wonderful time here tonight. You know, but what, your, your, your testimonies are so powerful, and you all have been together during all of, all of that time. So she's able to express just as much as you concerning what God has done and what he was doing with you. I want these people to hear how, and I don't know how much of your testimony you're gonna give tonight, and he's gonna bring that Chicago excitement, both of them, <laughs> and she is a fireball, so I, I wanna let you all know that. But uh, I wanna- Who, me? Yeah. <laughs> I that was gonna say No, but you'll, you'll be saying something, okay. you know, okay. just to greet the people and stuff, so okay. praise God. Okay. Uh, but they have done an incredible job in Chicago, Illinois, and, uh, and that's my home. In fact, just to let you all know, her great-grandfather, great or great-grandfather, great is Mexican. Yes. So that means <laughs> you all know, I told her, welcome home. <laughs> Say, habla espanol, <laughs> you know. <laughs> But what a powerful time in your testimonies. But here, tell me, tell us just a little bit of your testimony and what the people can expect to get in terms of just being in the atmosphere and under that kind of anointing. 
Well, well basically, basically, you know, for me, the, my testimony is it, it's really, really vast. I mean, we went through so many phases and stages in life and mm -hmm. our marriage. As you stated, we've been married now for 42 years. And out of the 42 years, you know, our desire as we began to walk by faith was to become holy millionaires. Praise you know, and, and by that, holy you know, we were, we, were, we, we were born and, and raised in poverty but, and reared in obscurity. But we refused to die in ignominy. And once we got the revelation mm -hmm. of what it says in Psalms, Psalms 35, where it says, let them shout for joy, which favors my righteous cause. For the Lord thy God takes pleasure in the, the prosperity, prosperity of his servants. Yes. And so we begin to grab a hold of the word of faith and begin to uh, preach faith and teach faith. And it changed our life. And God gave us favor. Uh, we were uh, at home and, and uh, uh, talking. And my wife came up with an idea about owning a mall. And uh, wow. I shared with her, I said, well, to own them all, we need a lot of money. <laughs> and the next day I went back to work. And uh, we prayed and touched and agreed that God would give us some type of entrepreneurship uh, uh, business. And after our prayer, I happened to overhear a, a conversation at work. I worked at that time for Dean Food Company, who happened to be the territorial zone area for the Baskin Robbins ice cream parlors back then. Wow. Now, this goes back some 30s, 7, 40 years ago. Uh, maybe close to, 40, close to 40 years yeah. ago. Now, and you uh, were young. Yes. You were yes. in your early, mid-20s? Yes. Praise, Praise God. God. Probably about 27, 28. About yeah. About 27, 28. Yeah. So that, yeah. they need to know this, this yeah. is not something that God had to do for you when you're like 40, 40 years, years old. Yeah. You believe God at 20. Go ahead, tell us. And so what happened as we, as I went into the office, there was a, a conversation of the two vice presidents, the vice president of Dean Food Company and the vice president of, of Baskin Robbins. And so I remember their names, you know, quite well. And so when I happened to hear John Gukas and Virgil Lichtai, as they were in the office, they were talking about uh, the market. They were having a meeting about the market of how they want to expand the market with Baskin and Robbins. What can they do to, to get more business and, and to do that? And they began to say that in the African-American community, they were looking to penetrate that. And they wow. began to find out the research that African-Americans were consumers and that this this is a market they have not yet tapped into. And so they said, man, we would certainly would love to open up a Baskin Robbins. So I was eavesdropping and I walked <laughs> past the door and I heard them say the word, well, we need a black man. I happen to be real black. So I just happened to hear the conversation. And so I heard them when they stated that. I came home and uh, shared it with my wife and it was on a Friday. Well, that Sunday, my wife and I, we went to church and we prayed and we drove down Madison Street. Wow. And uh, as we drove down Madison Street, the Lord says, that's the building right there. So I decided to go Monday to go talk to the owner of that particular property on Madison and Karloff and ask him, would he be interested in, if I were to bring a franchise there, would he be willing to rent it to them? He said, absolutely. And he told me how much the rent would be. Well, I went back to work on Monday and went in to see Virgil. I said, Virgil, I'd like to speak with you for a moment. I said, you know, my wife and I, we went to church and we were praying and uh, the Lord had given us this idea that maybe we should own a Baskin Robbins. <laughs> well, Virgil Lichtai was sitting in his chair and my God, I mean, his expression, his body language, everything, he just hit the desk. He said, oh my God. He said, this is incredible. John, John and I were just talking about, we need to open up a store in the African-American community. And he said, you happen to be black. I said, yeah, real black. <laughs> and so, so he says, he says to me, he says, well, he says, we were just talking about that. I said to myself, yeah, I know I heard you. <laughs> so, but so, they didn't know you they, had no, eavesdropped. No, 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 they didn't know I was eavesdropping. <laughs> no, I probably would have been fired. You know, yeah. then, eavesdropping on that conversation. And so after I shared that with him, he said, I said, not only that, uh, I have also went and talked to the owner and they're willing to rent it to a Baskin Robbins. He said, oh my God, you're kidding me. He said, let's get in my car. And we went, we drove down from uh, Franklin Park, Illinois to go down to the inner city wow. of Chicago. We went and met with the, the man who owned the store. Mm -hmm. And the rest became history. The lease was signed that day. Yeah. Wow. And I began to make a statement. And the statement that I made was, I don't have no money. God says, shut up. So Wait, God, God told, told you to shut up when you said you don't have no money. That's correct. And, 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 and why, why do you, do you think, think God was telling you to 
to not give voice to that. Because, because God, God was giving me favor. I didn't need money. Hey. What God was giving was favor. Hey. And at that point, everything was orchestrated and everything was divinely in order. But I was getting ready to just mess up the order yes. because by saying what I don't have, yeah. not knowing that when I began to learn the word of faith, that words are power and yes. they're powerful. So the scripture says in Isaiah 55 and 11, so shall my words be that go forth out of your mouth. They shall not return unto you void, but they shall accomplish the purpose wherefore they have been sent. So if I say I'm out of money and don't have money, guess what? I wouldn't have money. That's exactly but I didn't need money. All I needed was favor. That's it. So and you I, had that. And I had the yeah. favor. And what they did yeah. when I got ready, they said, well, are you willing to go to California, Burbank, California? I said, yes. Yes. And so they said, OK, we're going to get you a plane ticket. We're going to do everything. We're going to start the construction wow. on the store. And at this moment, nothing has been discussed about money. Finally, they said unto me, we're going to put a surcharge on the ice cream that you purchase. And then that's the way you'll pay your franchise fee and you'll pay your money. We're going to give you this this operation with a turnkey operation where you'll go in and you have no money. Wow. And that's what God did for us. Oh, my God. God. Favor. Favor. Being in the right place. At yes. the right time. And, um, you know, not only did they send my husband, Bishop, but they sent me as well because they wanted a team to go in yes. to learn the operations. And so they didn't suspect that he would come back and just say, okay, guys, I'm retiring from Dean Foods. I'm going to go in and work the franchise. They knew he would continue to work while I learned the operations wow. there. Three weeks, 21 days, wow. hardcore studying, taking they notes. Were taking care of you all. Taking care while you of were us. There. Absolutely. They paid me for my job and it paid me That's for, right. the, for the That's training. That's right. For wow. the training. Per diem. You know, per they diem. fed yes. us. They took care, housed us, everything. Just get the training. Come back. When we came back, as my husband stated, it was a turnkey operation. He took his week paycheck that day cashed it, put it in the cash register. Before two hours were over, he had his paycheck back, and we never looked back. Oh. So, you know, God has no picks and chooses Thank you. as, as to, to who he will choose to bless. If you delight yourself in the Lord, the word of God says, yes. what will he do? Give you the desires oh. of your heart. If you're 15, if you're 25, if you're 40, God has no respecter of persons. So God chooses to bless us. When we walk in the heart of obedience, yes. that's when we could see the blessings and experience the blessings. But it all started with having a vision. A vision. It started by dreaming. And, you know, again, when I say to, you know, we visited what, what I call the, the dream theater of life. And that is painting a picture on the canvas of your imagination. And so immediately when I began to walk in faith and begin to teach faith and understand the principles of faith, I began to just speak this thing into existence. And so what we did, we just dreamed and we began to say that we, we're not going to be poor. We, we're going to yeah. be rich. That's, and so that we'll be financiers in the kingdom. Culture, no. skin color. Nothing. Nothing. Well, I mean, in this instance, I mean, thank God for being black because they needed a black man. And I happened to be black. Glory to God. And so that's how we were able to open the stores. And with that, not only were we blessed with one store, we they, were, they, they, get, they gave us three stores. We wind up purchasing wow. two more. We had a total of five five stores wow. that we wind up having. Yeah. And you're yeah. a young, young man. man. Yeah. Uh, and, and, but you're seeing the favor of God on your life because... Favor ain't fair, but it's fabulous. It's fabulous. It's so fabulous. <laughs> and I say, and it's yours. <laughs> it's so yours. Yeah. It's so yours. And you know, having a knowledge, the limited base of knowledge of God's word that we had, we had knowledge of what God's word said, Bishop. Yes. We did not have revelation. Mm. And so we took, I mean, what God said, we took it and we ran with it. Mm -hmm. Favor my righteous cause. Okay, God gives us favor. Yes. But did we have a full illumination of what he revealed to us in that right. word? Probably not. Mm -hmm. But as we walked the walk of faith, things became Absolutely. more open, more clearer, That's and we began to understand. Uh, but one day, hard times fell upon us. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't raining rainbows and ice cream cones all of, tell you us, know. Tell us. But we, because of, I would have to say pride, and because of the accumulation of wealth that we had started to gain, uh, that spirit of pride will yeah. come in. You know what, let me, let me interject. Yeah. 
And I've always said this, success can be ugly if you don't know how to handle it. And it can cause you to diminish and not your value. Your value never changes with God, but it can cause you to diminish in resources because you stop depending on the source and you're looking at the resource. So please go ahead. And so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm fervently working the business. My husband is working his job. Um, and we were, gr- yeah. And we were, gr- I mean, we were just, you know, our nose was to the grinder. I was, I, I would have to say, you've got to hire staff, you've got management, you've got books, you've got everything that it takes to run the business. And so as we're growing at this very rapid pace, I'm saying to this man here, hey, slow down, pull the reins in a little bit you know we're growing faster than anticipated no let me handle this let me handle this People need to hear this yeah let me handle this and I was like oh my god lord I'm so overwhelmed what do I do what do I do and you know now that you've got all of this you don't have right people in right places at all, all of right. these locations. Or the proper training. Yeah, or the proper training. Yeah. Now pilferage is c- stepping in. You know, you get people taking from you, your employers. Absolutely. You know, so things are slowly but surely getting away from us. And I'm like, honey, we've got to get some help here. What is going on? you got to give me more help. Oh, you can handle it. You can handle it. <laughs> and so finally I says, hold it. Just time out let's let's do this thing in the right way so right. that we can continue to to be um, best um, blessed by these blessings and so this man here right here who this black man right here you know just said okay l- let me do it my way and what happens then well i mean what happened was that you know again uh, you know the scripture is so fulfilling yeah where it says yeah. that you know, uh, pride before goes before the fall. The fall. Yeah. And uh, they had offered us at the time, because of the amount of business that we were doing, and it was growing so Phenomenal. fast. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Yeah. Um, there was an ice cream that was called Black Walnut that would only come out seasonal. Wow. And uh, it would come out seasonal. And the number one selling ice cream was vanilla. Well. The culture was different in yes. the African American community. Uh-huh. Well, Black Walnut became the number one seller. Wow! So they they had to make it an all year round product, mm-hmm. and and we became the number one store in the chain, out of all the stores in California. Wow. Who have now? You have to also take consideration that we have inclement weather. Yes. So we yes. have cold weather. Absolutely. You know, so people not out wow. buying ice cream when when it's cold. So yeah. you think, right. you know, so. We were selling more gallons of ice cream than any store wow. with Baskin Robbins. And because of what was taking place, they came to me and shared with me that they, they're interested and asked me a question. How many stores would you like to own? I said, 10 to 12. <laughs> so they said, we'll give you. Now notice what they said. They said, we will give you 12 stores. We'll give you whatever that, give, that you can. Give, key word. Give, yeah. as, as whatever you can handle. So when they said that, immediately, without consulting, without acknowledging God, because in this prior, my wife and I, everything we did, we did it through prayer. Now, because I'm making money, now I have accumulated, I have close to a million dollars in the bank. Now, no one, you know, I've gotten to that place. I'm a whole, I'm a millionaire now right, right. at the age of under 30. Yeah. And so I get to a place where I said, well, uh, okay, we're ready. So I go back in and tell them we're ready now to uh, accept some more stores. They said, well, let's consider, let's just maybe wait a full year, and then we'll give you, we'll open two a year. Let's do it that way, so we'll do them every six months. Mm -hmm. My wife had said that prior, she said, baby, time out. Let's just slow down. We can have close to 100 employees. Let's wait until uh, we kind of get a hold of this and get someone that we really can trust. Well, at that moment, pride rose up in me. (laughs) And I told her, listen, it was me who God spoke to in this, not you. You're right, absolutely. And because of that, you know, little did I know, you know, that was a spirit of pride uh-huh. because we were one. Right. But yet now I get to a place now. She's doing all the work. I'm not working the stores. She's working the stores. Uh-huh. So, so the pressure I, is really on her. Yes. The dream, the dream is, is from is you, from you yeah. but the pressure is on her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pressure all over. <laughs> yeah. And so what happens, what, what happens is that now all of a sudden, you know, they, when I go back to them and tell them I'm ready to open stores, they say to me that let's just consider, let's wait six months and we'll, we'll give you another store. Notice the word I said again, give. Right. I said, no, 
I want to get it now. I think that we're ready to take another store. They said, well, uh, here's, a, here's, here's the situation. If we give you another store now, you're going to have to pay for it and put the money down out of your your, 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 your own, money, proceeds. Your, your own okay. proceeds. So I said, that's no problem because now we're sitting close to, you know, we have well over half a million dollars. So it's no problem. I said, what do you need? They tell me the amount. I got to pay the $25,000 franchise fee, which is $50,000. We got to pay now to refurbish the store, you know, pay all of this and, and get it done. I said, no problem. Well, we went out and bought, and I found two locations. I went out and found two more locations, and they agreed to it, but they had me to sign a contract. And the contract that I signed was simply a contract that dealt with cross-collateralization. Cross At that time, I didn't even know what it really meant. Yeah. Explain to them what it, what it means. means. Well, well cross-collateralization simply means that, if, that if, if, if you go into foreclosure, if anything happens to the one store, although the other stores are profitable, it, they have the right to take all of the stores. Yeah. It's, it's either... All, one and none, or they take yeah, all of them. Yeah. So the three stores were doing wonderfully. Yeah. The two stores that I purchased, mm -hmm. the moment that we opened those two stores, everything for us began to take a nosedive. Yeah. Wow. And prior to that, when, when all this set in, then, you know, I came up and decided that I would hire another accountant. I hired another accountant, and we were used to paying taxes. We were giving fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 that we paid to the IRS. Now I hired a new accountant because he says I shouldn't be paying taxes because I went out and purchased a new, brand new Mercedes Benz, and he was the finance director, and he told me, he says, man, you, you shouldn't be paying taxes on a, on, a, on a new business. You should be filing the losses and, and getting all your tax deductions. Well, we hired this accountant, and uh, we wind up getting back the, the following year, a $10,000 tax right, yeah, return. That's return. That's a, yeah. And that was good money to receive. Prior, we're paying 50 and 60. We're paying. Right. Now we're receiving back 10,000. Six months later, I get a knock on my door. I happen to be home and I open the door and it was an IRS agent. She pulls a badge out. She flashes a badge and she said, Mr. Abercrombie and Mrs. Abercrombie, is your wife home? I said, yes. They said, they asked me, said, well, uh, can we come, can I come in and speak with you? I said, yes, I let her come in. And she says, uh, she says unto me, she says, you have been selected for an audit. And I said, well, what is that? She said, well, an audit is where we're going to go and we want to go through. We're going to give you all of the things that we need. Yeah. We need you to produce a checklist. A checklist. Yeah, exactly. Well, your bank account, your deposits, all of the things that say your receipts from your business, your travel, everything. So then she says, you have a beautiful home. My pride. I take her and show her my house. I take her, open the garage. I show her my cars. I got a Mercedes. I got a Corvette. I have a truck. I'm showing all these wonderful things. She, and she's, yes. she, she's writing everything down on a piece of paper. And she's writing all this down. Taking notes. Well, taking notes. Well, after the audit, all of a sudden, we had in our bank account, we had close to over, close to a million dollars. Uh -huh. Now, when all of this happens, I have in a safe deposit box $260,000. When this happens, all of a sudden, everything gets frozen. Uh, they wow. come back now and say, I owe an additional $260,000 with interest and penalty. And the penalty is compounding daily. daily. And so, in doing that, I said, well, what am I going to do? So, at that moment, we went from... From, from being on top of the world to in the valley. In the, in, the, in, the, in the valley. And now, it was at that time that we began to, everything was going on a downward spiral. And because of my pride, and my wife and I, we were in the bedroom and she came to me. My daughter came home. On the day my daughter came home, we had a, our, our baby daughter coming home from the hospital being born. The day she came home, our lights was turned off. Wow. We went from rag, we went from riches to, to rags. Like rags, over riches, riches back, back to rags. To rags. To rags. Back to rags. Back to rags. Yes. You gotta hear the rest of the story. Wait, tonight, tonight, how God miraculously brought them out. Because if he tells the whole story here, that's not all of it. That's just one. All the other things that God has blessed them with, the words that they've spoken, the ministry they started, the construction company that they started. I mean, it goes on and on and on. But the ideal is whatever God did for them, he will do it for you. And what I say unto one, Jesus said, I say unto all. And this is the thing you have to understand. Whenever success comes, you got to know how to handle it and you need the humility of a lamb to help you during those times. 
but God is a God of change and miracles. And God gave you all tremendous miracles. And I don't know how much you're gonna tell that story tonight, but they need to hear because people are quite successful in our ministry. We thrive for what God wants us to do. The priority is always kingdom. Mm -hmm. The secondary is all other than kingdom people Absolutely. because we can't put people before the kingdom. Absolutely. Thank but the you. kingdom is primary. That's what we preach. And that kingdom is what we preach to people that needs to hear it. Absolutely. And how can they hear without a preacher? And how can he preach? Amen. And he needs that. We need, we have a sent word. And God's going to give you a word tonight. And I don't know, it's, yeah, that's the camera. God's going to give you a word tonight that's going to absolutely revolutionize your life and change your word and your world rather and you don't want to miss it and those that are watching by way of social media if you're tuned in i don't know where what part of the country you're from or at that point but you want to get in as much as you can seven o'clock is mountain a standard time so that you don't miss any single word that's going to come out of these people's mouths because it's going to be a word i guarantee you and if there's anything that I can guarantee is that the word of God works and it will change your life. And so tonight, you don't want to miss it. Give us a last word that you want to share tonight. Well, the last word that I want to share, Bishop, if you allow me to do so. And I just really sense a, a time of this because, again, with our falling and with all the things that happened, one of the things that the Lord gave us was also a debt cancellation anointing. And so with that. I challenge all of your members and those who are debt, those who are being challenged oh my that, that tonight that I'm going to, we were, we received, and I'll go through this tonight. We received a, a $9 million debt cancellation. We were in debt of $13 that was million. That powerful dollars. testimony you told yes. last night. Yes. I, said I said to my, to my wife, wife, we're going to do that. that. <laughs> Amen. Go, go ahead. Don't so start. I want to challenge those of you to bring your bills tonight whatever bills that you may have. And I want you to come tonight because tonight Praise I'm going to pray for you and pray with you that God will do what he did for us. As Amen. Bishop Brown has stated, he said, God is not a respecter of a person, but rather God is a respecter of faith. Yes, and, the, and so with that being said, the anointing is tangible. And so I'm going to be uh, agreeing and touching and agreeing with you tonight that God do something supernatural. This is not just going to be a regular service. This will be a time of impartation. And I'm here, I came all the way from Chicago to share with you, you know, and to give you the opportunity to, to let you know that God is still yet in the blessing Amen. business and the debt cancellation business. Amen. And tonight, God's going to supernaturally begin to cancel debts of those of you who, who may be indebted. That's right. You heard, you heard it here right now you're going to be watching it keep it going share it on social media with other people we we really appreciate y'all tuning in and we thank god for you and tonight is going to be a night that's going to change your life and i want you to mark that on your calendar that that this, this day is a day, day that will change the rest of your life and you'll remember by having that on your your, your calendar whatever it is five years down the road that this was a day that your life was changed. So thank you all. God bless you all. We appreciate you very, very much. For Jesus is Lord. Thank you, Rose, for coming. God bless you. We go hear something bless quickly. quickly from all right. Tonight. Okay. Doctor, God bless, God bless you, you bless all. You. We'll see you all later. God bless you. God, God bless. bless you.